bless you, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. And Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, we've been doing a brief study through the book of First John. Nothing elaborate. And certainly not focusing on the facts of the book, but more on the application of the book. Which, when all is said and done, is the most important thing. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. And so I say all of that simply to say that we are in chapter 4, and we're going to finish our time in 1 John this morning in chapter 4, because what we're going to read, if you continue to read 4 and 5, is pretty much the same as what we have already talked about. It just repeats itself. But one thing that we haven't talked about in this study is found in chapter 4 and verse 1, and it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because there are many false prophets that are gone out into the world. I want to focus on that right there because Jesus said, Many will come in my name and profess that I am Christ. And oftentimes when we read that, we read that as the person is confessing to be Christ. But could it be that Jesus is saying, They will admit that I am the Christ? And that is how they will deceive so many by claiming to know me but polluting my truths. And friends, we live in a world where there are many voices. There are many messages. How do we know the truth? We must know the word of God. I have been told that in the mint, when they bring people in to teach them how to detect counterfeit money, you would think that they would pass counterfeit after counterfeit. They would study counterfeit money, right? So that they would know the counterfeit so well that when they saw the real dollar bill, they would know it. It would, it would stand out like a sore thumb. But actually, it's quite the opposite. What they do is they blindfold them, and for eight hours a day, for five, ten days in a row, they simply handle real money. And they get so familiar with the real money that when the counterfeit passes through their hands, they immediately can detect it. And I would submit to you that it is the same. We need to become so familiar with the Word of God. That's why I encourage you to read at least four chapters a day of the New Testament. Because you will read the New Testament once every two months, which is six times a year. You will become very familiar with the New Testament. So that when you see or hear these false prophets, these false teachers that corrupt the Word of God, you will immediately be able to detect it and you can flee from it. My heart breaks for the masses that sit under false teaching each week. But I can't do anything about that other than pray for them. But what I can do is I can ensure that I will not be swept away with such lies, with such deception. You know, again, the Bible says in the last days, the very elect will be deceived if possible. Why? Because there is such illiteracy when it comes to the word of God. But here's what's fascinating about that illiteracy. In the book of Amos, chapter 8, verse 11, listen to this. This is talking about the last days. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that there will be a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a famine of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and they will not find it. Now, if you're familiar with that passage or you happen to be reading along with me, you will have noted I left one thing out of that passage. Let's go back and read it again because I told you that there's going to be a famine. But what's even more interesting about that passage is this. Listen, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine of my word upon planet earth. God will send it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us that God will send a strong delusion. And yet these are the days that we live in, friends. People are so illiterate. They might know a few facts. You might know a few facts about the Bible. But do you really know the word of God deep in your soul? Have you become one with it? 
Oh, friends, that's a serious question that I hope you contemplate deeply in your spiritual journey with the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Friends, be very careful. I can only tell you by the evaluation that I have done, that I have experienced, 99% of what you see on Christian TV is not Christian at all, friends. Nor is there anything Christian about your local Christian bookstore. If you want to learn to be a true and faithful follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will camp out in the Word of God. You will plant yourself here. And all the free time that you have will be spent in the Word of God, reading and reading and reading. What did Jesus say? Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What did David say? David said, thy word is more valuable to me than all the gold and all the riches of this world. David didn't say that lightly. We are told in the Torah to bind it upon our neck, tie it around our wrists. Friend, the word of God is supposed to be our most prized possession. Take all that I have. I will freely, gladly give it to you. But I beg of you, don't take the word of God from me. Much of it I have planted in my soul. Much of it I have placed into my mind. But every time I read it, it is an enlightening experience. And I hunger for it. And I thirst for it. Like the deer thirsts after the water at the water brook. So friends, back to our text. Believe not every spirit. We talked about this earlier in the study. They are sheeps in wolves clothing. They look like sheep. They smell like sheep. They act like sheep. They talk like sheep. You have to look very hard and very diligently to be able to find out they're not sheep. But friends, they are sheep in wolves' clothing and they have nothing more. Their only agenda is to bring you down with them. To destroy your faith. To interrupt your walk. Friends, I cannot warn you enough. Be careful little eyes what you see. Be careful little ears what you hear. Because what you see and what you hear from others is forming what you know about the Most High. But you shouldn't be taking other people's words for your understanding of the Most High. Not even me. You should be in a relationship, deeply involved in the Word of God, deeply involved in fellowship and prayer, to where you are coming to know the Most High, the Lord Jesus Christ, on your own. And as He reveals Himself to you, very few can misrepresent Him now. I love you, friends. I'm praying for you. I am truly lifting you up to the Father. I'm praying that he will protect you as he guides you into all truth. And that you will have the strength and the courage to face these difficult days of breaking out of this box of tradition and normality that most of us have been raised in, that you will truly begin to experience the Lord Jesus in ways you've never known possible. Now, as he wills, friends, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.